So, Paul, we, we know what the injury situation is. It was getting better. How much of a knockback is what happened on Tuesday night to not get the lads pitch time? Yeah, yeah, it's disappointing. Um, but let's be fair, we can't do anything about the weather, can we? You know, it's, um, it makes it tricky at this time of the year. You know, I've talked about it before that this November, December, January, it can be a bit of a grind. And, and that's, we're in a bloody good position as professional football people. It's a grind when you're in when you're in other jobs as well so it's it's part and parcel we just have to accept it they weren't able to play um, the lads were really looking forward to it they got themselves prepared for it um, the only bonus for them is that they didn't have to do the training session they just had a a, a, um, a, a running session to do on their own at the gym um, so we just get on with it it's probably it set us back maybe a week in terms of having players playing in games but we've waited a long time for them, so you know there's no point getting screwed up about it. We just have to deal with it and move on. And they have to be right, don't they? That's why. That's why mm. you'll you'll always be flexible with your targets for them. Yeah, without a doubt, they've got to be right. You know, when you've when you've had players missing for a, a, a serious length of time, we just can't afford to take any chances. And we are quite fortunate at the moment that we've you know we've we've got we've got the eleven starters. We had eight who were in in the squad for the last game. Um, obviously, Sonny Hilton was the one who got left out. We're now getting to a point where we've got other players who, who are available. You know, you look at Joel's still not right because he still hasn't had a game yet after nine months out. But Deb's had a couple of weeks of training. Duncan Iden's fit and available for selection um, when, when we need him. Um, Sonny, as I said there, so Ben Barkley's back into training. But I just feel as though they need games and we've just got to be patient, um, you know, in a, in a week or two. We've got um, we've got one of the reserve games in the Central League Cup against Blackpool, which will be a really good opportunity for us to get get lads to get some minutes, because then as we get closer to that Christmas program, we are going to need everybody available. I was going to say, does it mean that you alter next week and try to get one of the reserve games, just a friendly game, fitted in? No, there isn't anything we can do about it. To be honest with you, um, we we have inquired about getting bounce games, but they they're not the same. I actually think you get. Um, as much physical output in a training session, we can we can put a session on which gets the right sort of physical stimulus that we need, um, rather than doing it as a game. Because again, we've got the same problem of, of a lack of a training pitch that we can go and have a good game on. Um, so no, they'll train, we'll do what we need to do. Um, today we've had to go up to Gretna and work on, on the, the really good um, artificial pitch they've got, because our pitch is just waterlogged and we only have one available. Um, so we've just got to get on with it and um, and we'll see what happens over the next few weeks. Something else we've talked about before is the fact that if it is waterlogged, you just adapt and get on with it because it's how it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we have one pitch and that's the end of it, you know. So if that one pitch isn't right, you know, we, we've had we've had to do whatever we can. We have a, a facility in the Neil Sports Centre, which, you know, let's, let's be really honest, it's brilliant. It's not big enough to do any real structured work, but you can certainly do a match day minus one session in there because... I try to do any of the the bigger 11 v 11, the 11 tactic, the, the tactical stuff. I try to do that on a Thursday, so we've been able to do that today, being on Gretna's um, full size pitch. So we won't make any complaints if if we can't train on on the training pitch at Brunton Park on Friday. That's life. We get on with it and we just deal with whatever comes. So we are interested in Chris and Jack. You mentioned they're not totally over it. Has this week helped? Yeah, definitely. They've, they've both had a full week of training. Um, so they're back into it, and and the rest of the lads have all had a week of training. So no, we're in we're in a a better better physical place than we have been for many weeks. Um, now we've got to make sure that's reflected in performances and results. Is that going to reflect in more of a selection headache for yourself come Saturday morning? Oh, I really hope so. Yeah, I want them. That's that's what it's all about. We want as many options as we can. So yeah, I'll. Uh, well, probably not Saturday morning. The selection headache comes on a Wednesday and a Thursday night because the players all know on Friday who's who's going to start. Um, but they're all in it together. They all understand that. You know, I've done some work today and I've I've chopped and changed, put pl different players into the positions where I think we 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 wanted to do the work today. Um, so I've kept them guessing today, but I, I will tell them on Friday. We'll do our final bits of preparation in terms of um, the the physical stuff that we need, but also the set plays and then. Saturday, it's uh, fingers crossed as a manager that they, they go out and perform. We spoke to Jack Armour earlier in the week. He echoed something that you said, the fact that you can get all gloom and doom after a couple of draws, but then step back, have a look at, at where we're actually at. Without a doubt, we're in a good position. You know, we've, uh, we are certainly higher than I expected us to be. Um, 
and that's not in no way am I being disrespectful to the players. That's credit to the players that they're, they're going out and they're doing what they're doing, and we have to carry it on now. We've just got to keep working as hard as we are, maybe even work a bit harder, maybe even prepare a little bit better, and maybe even perform a little bit better over those 90-odd minutes. Just wrapping up the treatment side of things, Paul, the news that, that Ross is, is moving on. Great lad, absolutely mm. good people is Ross. Blow to go, but you'll want that resolved quickly. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's inevitable when you're at a football club like ours that when, when you have good people, other clubs are going to come and take him away and they've made him an offer that he can't refuse and it's an offer that I can't match, So, or we as a football club can't match. So good luck to him. You know He has a family that he's got to look after and um, I totally respect that. It's been brilliant working with him. He's got an absolutely incredible work ethic the way he goes about it. He's very, very good at his job. So it's no surprise that somebody else wants to take him. Um, the challenge for us now is to find a replacement equally as good or maybe somebody with the potential to be equally as good. Um, I've got to say we've had a couple of applicants so far who are, look really promising. I hope that we'll be interviewing next week for that role um, and the sooner we can make a decision and whoever we're bringing in can serve their notice and, and we, we work it with, uh, with Ross and, and whoever comes in then the better for everybody and we can all just move forward. Is something like this the same as a player, Paul? Because now you, look, you do background checks and character checks because mm. you have to get on with this person. Yeah. Do you do that or is it totally different? You just need a role filling. Oh, no, no, we have to do character checks because they've got to... Um, well, firstly, they've got to understand what the role involves as a first-team physio because it isn't a nine-to-five job. It's not four days a week and you have a nice jolly up. It's, it's a flipping hard job. It's a tough job and, you know, there's times where I'll be at home and I'm enjoying a day off doing working from home, if you want to say, which coming in COVID. Ross is in here with injured players. You know, he's he's checking up on them on a Sunday and at times he's coming in. So there's times where, well, in fact, it's, it's a seven day a week job. You might not always be in the building seven days a week, but you're constantly monitoring players and, and finding out where they are. So it's somebody who understands the job, that's first and foremost. Somebody who's got the experience and the qualifications for the job. Um, and then the personality comes into it as well. Um, I, I do think that if you've got somebody who's worked in a professional sport environment, whether that be f men's football or women's football, whether it be men's cricket uh, or women's cricket, whatever, um, or, or other elite sports, they understand the, the hours that are required. Um, and I don't think anybody would apply for the job if they if they didn't think that they could fulfil that role. So... As I said, a couple of really, really strong applicants that have come in for it. Um, I hope that we will be able to interview next week um, and Ross will help on that, thankfully. He, he wants to leave it in a good state, uh, which again doesn't surprise me. And then hopefully we'll have an appointment made as soon as possible. Salford, did you get a chance to go yourself or send anybody last night? Yeah, I did. I went and watched it. Um, absolutely freezing night. Um, they're, they're a funny side because they're a really, really good football side. They've, um, they've assembled a good group of players, um, technically very good footballers. They're having a little bit of a tough patch at the moment, um, particularly scoring goals and the way that they're playing, they're, they're getting punished. But you can see they're a good side. Um, they've got a coach, uh, manager in Neil, who's uh, got really good experience for Manchester United. Um, so we know it's going to be a game that we need to be at it. It's a game that I believe that if we are f fully front-footed and determined and committed, then I think we've got enough to cause them problems. And I've just found out that we've got 1,366 supporters travelling along. Um, and wow, what a difference that's going to make. I mean, I, w I must admit, I knew, I knew our numbers were high. And I was looking at the Peterborough contingent last night thinking, well, if we get if we get the numbers that, that we're talking about and we fill in behind that goal, that's going to be a good place to go and enjoy a celebration at the end if we can go and do it properly. At the time in the Football League, they've been really good at home. Not so much this season. That's Again, if you, if you get the start that you're talking about, get on the front foot, mm. we can take advantage of that little nerves they've got at the moment. Well, we have to um, because, they, you know, last night I thought they, uh, well, they did... did uh, they did dominate possession. I think it was 59% possession they had last night, but they lost 3-0. So they, they've, they've got to get back to turning that possession into results, and we've got to make sure that we exploit the, the fact that they're having a little bit of a struggle.
Um, not not be disrespectful in any way because I look at the individuals they've got and they can cause problems. So, you know, they've got, you know, the, you look at the bench and they've got people on the bench who w we couldn't bring into this football club, simple as that, um, just on finances alone, whether they'd want to come to Carlisle is a different matter. Um, but this is a great game for us, a really good opportunity, a good challenge, going up against one of the teams who, rightly so, are one of the fancied teams to be promoted. Um, I'm just really thankful that the ownership group are not able to play on Saturday. This is similar to the Doncaster game, isn't it? We're locked in the table, but they're feeling down about life, whereas we're thinking, hey, we're doing OK. But there we are, not on almost the same point. Yeah, exactly. That's the way, that's how crazy the league is. Um, we have to make sure that we leave them behind. Um, it's as simple as that. It's the only thing on our mind. Go and put a performance in. Whoever gets selected, go and have loads and loads of energy and make sure come the end of the game when we go to thank our supporters, we're thanking them and we've got a big smile on our face. Just the three games unbeaten, Paul, it is pretty damn good at this stage of the season. Mm, yeah, it is, yeah. It's, um, you know, you, you want to go unbeaten for long periods of time and we've had a little bit of a sticky patch. Um, I would have liked at least one more win out of this little run that we've had, but we haven't got it. So let's get let's get back to winning ways and set ourselves up for the FA Cup the week after. You did, you did well there. I cocked my words up. I actually meant three games on de defeat. What the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Three games we haven't lost in the league. Whatever that is, yeah. that's pretty good at this stage of the season. Yeah, of course it is. You want to you want to go on these sustained runs. I mean, it's really odd because I, I don't I tend not to look back at things. So. When people say to me, oh, recently uh, eight, nine games unbeaten and you've just said to me whatever it is, the run we're on now, I don't really bother about that. I know we're in a good position. I know things are going all right. I also know things can be a lot better. Things can improve um, and I want them to improve and I'm demanding that of the players every day. I'm demanding it of the staff as well. We have to... We have to set high standards as a group of staff so that the players respond to that. Um, and I can assure you, I, I, as long as I'm in this football club, I'll keep demanding standards. And I hope that the players keep keep working to try and achieve those. And if they do, then we'll go on longer runs. Um, hopefully this weekend, um, we're one game further along that, that unbeaten run. Does that include reassessing, Paul? Because I know you said that wasn't something you really do. It's just game by game by game. But when you get to certain stages of the season, like halfway, for example, if we're doing what we're doing now, do you reassess where we're going to go next? Well, what I would say, I won't be telling anybody anyway, that's for sure. Um, I, I'm always, you know, I might, I might say one thing to, to you and in front of the, in, in public, but I'm always, I'm always setting goals and setting targets, whether that be a one game target, whether that's a, a three game in a week target, whether that's me looking at the monthly schedule and going, right, I want this out of this month. Um, because I think you can be a bit deluded to think I'm going to sit and look at my calendar and go, right, I want maximum points out of every one of these games. Because it doesn't always work that well. They're always set up to try and win it. I, I There's games where I look at and think, we're going to be all right if we can get, get a point out of that one. That'll be a good point. Um, so I, I always assess and I'm always getting targets and, and trying to set, let, set short goals or medium goals, whatever it might be. What I would say, again, is I won't be making it public. I ain't going to give anybody a stick to beat us with. We want to win as many games as we possibly can. We want to finish as high up in the table as we possibly can. And if it's after 19 games or 23 games or whatever you want to talk about, I want to be in the highest position we possibly can. Just to finish, you mentioned the 1366. Is this another example where you'll say to the lads, visualise it, 90th minute, and we're celebrating a win? Possibly. Um, if I were to say, yeah, that makes people think I plan what I'm going to say, but I don't. I just say what, what comes into my into my head, like what I feel. When I watch them warming up, I, I get a feeling of what's going on. When I watch the supporters, I get a feeling of it. How they perform in the first time determines what I'm going to say at half-time. And then when that whistle goes, sometimes that determines it's going to be a positive chat. Sometimes we win the game and they get a bollocking off me. It all depends how I've seen the game or whatever. Um, I really want it to be a good one.